out there in internet land. So, you want to play Dofus, but you're feeling a little lost. Follow me, we'll learn together step by step, and I'll be your guide. Your epic adventure begins by creating your Ankama account. Okay, perhaps it's not the most epic of beginnings, but still it's an important step. You can create this account quickly and easily by visiting dofus.com and clicking create an account. This will send you to a place where you can choose your account name and password that will give you access to the game. Don't forget to use a valid email address when creating your account because you will need access to that email if you ever forget your password. And then of course, the classic antibot capture and terms and conditions. Take a moment to read them, it could be useful in the future. With this step, your account has now been created. It's time to download the game by clicking on that pretty little download button on the site. The amount of time that this step takes will depend on your internet connection, but you'll have my melodious voice to keep you company while the installer trickles through the tubes of the interwebs. It could be worse, right? With the installer downloaded, you'll just need to follow its instructions step by step. Normally this process is easy and shouldn't pose any problems. But if you do happen to win the technical problems lottery, visit our help site at support.ankama.com. In the DOFUS technical assistance section, our team will help you slice through those problems like a hot knife through butter. With the basic client installed, it's time for the next installation step, updating. When you start the DOFUS up launcher, it will automatically patch your client with the most current version of the game. This first patch job may take quite a while. There's nearly a decade's worth of content that has to settle itself on your hard drive. Now that the patching is complete, click play and the login screen will appear. Here you'll need to enter the Ankama account name and password that you chose earlier. I hope you remember them. A little click on the orange play button and you're now connected to the login server. The client will ask you to choose an account nickname. This will not be the name of your character. It's the name that others will see when you make a comment on our forums or when someone adds you to their friends list. Choose well, your account nickname will be part of your reputation in the game. Once you're sure of your choice, confirm it and you're connecting. Take courage now because it's time to select your server and character class. You'll arrive at the server select screen where you can choose which server will be your character's home. If you have no preferences, you could allow the client to automatically choose a server for you. If you have friends already playing Dofus or you want to peruse your options, click manual server selection and pick the server your friends play on. A final click on confirm and you'll be ready to bring your first character to life. The first thing you must choose is your character's class and gender. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'll take a yop. Now you can pick your character's color depending on your tastes. Personally, I'm fond of purple. Then you can choose a face. There are four good or more cheerful looking faces and four that are quite bad or tough looking. Pick whatever suits your personality. Then you can decide on your character's name. If inspiration is dodging your calls, you can use the randomize buttons to move this process along. Click create and you'll be catapulted into the world of 12. Now we're getting to the heat of the meat. You're on Incarnum, a floating island in the sky in the home of our in-game tutorial. I suggest that you start it right away and follow its instructions to the letter. You really don't need me for this step, just read the instructions and do what they tell you. Completing the tutorial will start you out with a full beginner set and some nice items to help you on your way, so it's really worth it. You can start by clicking continue. You'll learn all the basic game functions step by step. How to move, how to talk to an NPC, and how to equip an item. Even if you prefer to stroll around skyclad, you'll still need to know how it's done. And of course the tutorial will also lead you through your first battle. Fortunately, the Incarnum Scarecrow you're fighting doesn't have any spells or attacks, but it's exciting nonetheless. Each character starts out with three spells. Take the time to try them all. At the end of this difficult and bloody challenge, you'll leap to level two. Congratulations, you've survived your first fight and you're an adventurer now. Every time you level up, you'll automatically earn five hit points, a spell point, and five stat points, or characteristic points. Let's start by spending your spell points. Close the level up window and click on the wand down in the toolbar in your interface, right here. Leveling a spell to two costs one spell point, leveling it to three costs two points, and so on. Leveling a spell increases its effectiveness, which could mean an increase in damage, or range, or a reduced cooldown, or whatever. Feel free to compare the benefits of each spell's level by clicking the small tabs numbered 1, 2, 3, etc. This might seem overwhelming, but don't panic! Even if you make a mistake during your early adventures, you can redistribute your spell points and stat points using different game mechanics. And if you are under level 30, you can even reset your stats and spells for free as often as you like by visiting the Incarnum Inn and talking with Fairy Set. And speaking of your stat points, you'll need to click the little DNA icon in the toolbar to spend them. I've just leveled a spell that does earth damage, so I'm going to put my points into strength. Now if you have any doubts about which elements match with which stat, there's a tooltip to explain the element and the use of each stat. 
as you can see, strength boosts earth damage and increases the amount of items you can carry. Easy, right? Now, depending on your class, each stat will have different level caps. The more points you put into the stat, the more it will cost to increase it. To be more clear, let's look at an example on my screen. I have less than 100 points in strength at the moment, so each point I spend on strength will increase my strength by one, simple and clean. But once I hit 100 points or more of strength, I will need to spend two stat points to increase my strength score by one. Once you've spent your stat and spell points, you're ready to head for level three and higher. You've probably noticed this strange square button in the middle of the screen, and you're wondering what it could be. This is where you redeem your achievement awards. You have unlocked an exploration achievement by discovering the Rocky Peaks area, which means you have a reward of 26 experience points waiting for you. Click the Accept All button to redeem them. Get used to redeeming rewards like this because you will naturally be unlocking a lot of them. If you like achievements and you want to see what else you can unlock, click the little plus sign at the bottom right corner of your interface, then click on the golden cup. This will open the achievements window. Once you're done browsing, it's time to hit the road. Don't forget to nab the quest from Master Yaksai. He'll ask you to have a chat with Leekend Survivor and they are dreaming. I think you'll find you're up to the task. Head to the next map and hey, there they are! After you've expressed an interest in what they have to say, head back to Master Yaksai. Just like that, you've completed your first quest! Easy breezy lemon squeezy! From this point, you can choose to continue following Master Yaksai's quest chain, which will lead you through the beginning area and other game functions, or you can gallop off to unknown adventure throughout Incarnum. To help you find your way, open the world map using the M key shortcut or clicking the compass icon in your toolbar. There are several sub areas in Incarnum. To the northwest is a meadow designed for level one adventurers. To the northeast, a field for level five adventurers where you can encounter some strange plants. In the center, there are the canals and a charming forest to the southwest, also for level five adventurers. If you're level 10 or higher, head to the cemetery in the southeastern corner. You track your experience using the gauge that encircles the minimap in the center medallion of your interface. After completing a few quests or fights, your character will reach level 3 and learn a new spell. You can see the spell's effects in the spell interface. Remember the little wand? Don't worry, the new spell's icon will also automatically appear in your casting toolbar. You can use it in your next fight. You're now more prepared to put the fear of Yap into the monsters of Incarnum. One last thing. Once you reach level 10, head for the Incarnum Dungeon and look for some other adventurers of a similar level to join you. You can click on a player to invite them to join a temporary group or send them a private message to ask for help. At level 15, it's time to go to Astra via the balloon located to the extreme eastern end of Incarnum and begin your hunt for the famous Dofus Eggs! Good luck and enjoy your travels in the world of 12!